go, if you let me go, or if I leave on my own, you will feel, you will feel my absence when I'm not there. So the goal is that no matter where we go, our goal is also to what? To be a blessing. Don't always go with your head now. Don't always go asking people for this and asking folk for that. You need to say, Lord, man, oh my goodness, help make me a blessing. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be accepted in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer, praise the Lord. That no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good for that of mine to bring them to the hear. Amen. Amen. I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, uh, thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Okay, here's the promise. I will make thee a great nation. God is always into the multiplication. Anything that's dried up and died, nine times out of ten, it does not have God's stamp of approval on it. Amen. 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 And I will bless thee. He said, bless thee. That blessing me, I'm going to bless you in other ways materially too. Amen. Oh, I'm going to go there. Amen. See, if some holding this folk won't look at me like I'm twisted when I say this. Baby, it is not the will of God to be you to be walking around in poverty all the time. Amen. 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 It is not. The Bible said it is more blessed to give than be on the receiving end. How is it that you so anointed and you never have nothing to give? You only have your hand out. There's something wrong with that. Amen. Therefore, I don't take up no special offering. Do y'all ever help me take up any offerings? I don't take up no first fruit offering. I don't take up no new moon offering. I don't take up, I don't take up none of that stuff. I don't take up no sugar offering, no coffee offering, no honey offering. I don't take it up because I don't pay people for money. Amen. The reason why God placed you in the ministry is not for God to pay your pocket, preacher. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Every new project that the pastor come up with, he begging. I need y'all to sow into it. I need y'all to sow toward that end. Really? That ain't in my Bible. That ain't biblical. Amen? Amen. If we got to stay in the church right like right here, and if God we will give us a better building or a bigger building, we going to stay right here. Amen? Amen? Yes, Lord. Into God's safe fit. Amen? Amen? We ain't begging. We ain't borrowing. We ain't conniving and we ain't scheming. We ain't having revival for the sake of our uh, shut. We ain't having revival for the sake of raising money. You watch them preachers. First of the month, some of them start having revival. Why is it that you gotta have revival the first of the month? Why is it that income tax? You throw a revival that lasts a whole month. I perceive that somebody in the house got a thousand dollars that they can give me. Well, baby, why it's got to be a thousand? I don't feel like God was talking more if you said one thousand five hundred. I don't feel like God is talking more if you said seven, seven, seven. I don't feel like God was talking more if you said nine dollars and fifty nine cents plus tax. But you said a thousand dollars. Leave it alone. You pick it again, Pastor Jones. Amen. 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 And I will bless thee and make thy name great. Y'all, did y'all know that Mount Elementary, now we preach right here in this local assembly, but our videos go throughout the whole world. At one time, I used to track who was listening to our videos. And then I would go on, on YouTube and track some of the ways listen to that over there in Africa, Nigeria, somebody listening to Mount Elementary. There have been people calling you from other countries right now. Inboxes from other countries. Why? Because this goes past our local assembly. I've checked it out. There have been people in Alaska checking it out. <coughs> the word of God goes farther than just right here. Amen? Amen. Let's go a little farther. Let's deal with the word of God. Let's go a little bit farther. And I will make and make that name great. 
God has made Mount of Entry names great. And there's some areas that we're going to preach it over the internet that we don't know nothing about. There's some people I believe that's got to hear this word and get in the right place with God and we will never see them. When I had a dream, God gave me a, 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 a dream one time. And in dream I walked in the clouds and there was all kind of people following me. Caucasian, African American, African, praise the Lord, a European, Indians and all different types of nationalities. All of them just follow me in the cloud. Because I believe that the word that we preach affects people other than what we do right here. When you go on YouTube, when you go on Facebook, when you go on Instagram, that has the ability to touch somebody other than your local assembly. So we gotta make sure we tell the truth. We gotta make sure we ain't lying. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be what? A blessing. A blessing. Amen? And I will bless, and I will bless them that bless thee. And I will curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That's the first blessing of Abraham. Lesson number one that we taught. Galatians chapter number three, verse number 11 through 14. Galatians chapter number three. Verses number 11 through 14, dealing with the blessing of Abraham, the first part. Then we're going to go into the second. We're going to do it in the second lesson, dealing with the Holy Ghost. Galatians chapter number 3 and verse number 11. Amen? And the Bible says, But let no man, but that no man is justified by the word, by the Lord God in the sight of God. It is evident. The just shall live by faith. Stop right there, Pastor Jones. Yes, we believe in having a standard. And yes, we believe in living holy. We show you. Yes, Lord, we do. But we don't want to get so much into ritualism that we understand it ain't about everything you do. It's about the grace of God. It's about the mercy of God. By faith are you saved. Amen? Amen. The just shall live by faith. As a matter of fact, you can't do it by faith. You need to slow your, slow your roll a little bit. If you can't do it by faith, don't be so quick to do it. And the law is not a faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, <coughs> curse is every man that what? That is hanging on the tree, right? Amen. That hanging on the tree. Right here. That the blessing of Abraham Amen. might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Is that what it's saying? Yeah. That the blessing of Abraham. See, the blessing of Abraham deals with salvation also. Amen? Yeah. The blessing of Abraham deals with salvation. It ain't just money. See, you start teaching that people say, oh, Pastor John, you're the backstage. No, I ain't backstage, beloved. Because the blessing of Abraham that came on the Gentiles was salvation through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, no, look at me like I'm, I'm lost my man. Ain't you reading it out of your Bible? Word. Is that what the word says? Amen. 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 Let's go a little further. Okay, it says, but that no man is justified by the works of the law in the sight of God is ever, that the just but the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. It's not of faith. The man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse of us by the written. Cursed is every man that hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham may come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise, oh Lord, that we might receive the promise. Amen. What do it say? The promise of what? Spirit. Of the Spirit through faith. That you might receive the promise of the Holy Ghost through faith. That you might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. How? Through faith. That you might receive a promise. How do you receive the Holy Ghost? You receive the Holy Ghost by faith. How many of mean, y'all love saying, Jesus? If we've been taught, and ain't nothing wrong with it, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with it. If that's what it took for you to get the Holy Ghost, so be it. We've been taught to say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Say it faith. And ain't nothing wrong with it. If that what it took you get you on a, in a mindset, because I think we done it because we're trying to get people in a mind. You say Jesus, and the only thing you're thinking about is Jesus when you say it. That's right. 
And when you get your mind on Jesus, then the Holy Ghost will come in. But I want to interject this too. That the blessing that, that we might receive what? The promise of the Spirit through faith. Yeah. You receive the Holy Ghost by faith, man. Yeah. You receive the Holy Ghost by faith. It ain't how many times you say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When you start saying Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in faith, right. then them tongues begin to change. Right. Right. When you start saying help me, Lord, in faith, then them tongues begin to change. But it's all by faith. It's all about faith. Yeah. The blessing of the Spirit by faith. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. That's Lord. Here we go. So you don't have to tear. Amen. You really don't. Amen. If your faith is high enough, you can receive the Holy Ghost by faith. I'm going over this again before I get to the, to the main topic. The lesson of the blessing of Abraham dealing with the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. How many of y'all received the Holy Ghost by faith? I mean, uh, did you stay all night tearing? I tear for two weeks straight. Every time I went to church, we say, say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Right. And I love them, brother. They say, sometimes you got to jump for them. Jump like a bunny. <laughs> I jumped until I got tired. I jumped until I feel like I was gonna pass out. Because the brother said, sometimes you gotta jump for it. That's right. Leap for joy. Don't it make sense? Leap for joy. Jump for it. <coughs> you get the Holy Ghost that way. I did I didn't get the Holy Ghost by jumping for it. I didn't get the Holy Ghost by calling on Jesus till I almost passed out. The time I got the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. When I got it. I promised the Lord, Lord, you told me that if I receive that the Holy Ghost is a gift, and last my check, you don't want for no gift. Right. So I determined in my mind, Lord, I ain't going to that after the day. I ain't going today. And calling out on Jesus all the time. I'm going to sit back in my seat, round about on the second or third row. And it's quiet, brother Deacon. He said, he looked at me, I came to church, he just pointed at me. He just pointed, the deacon pointed at me. And he said like this, time I got to the raised my hands, was trying to go down to my knees. I started speaking in tongues. God said, okay, since you don't want to beg for it, I'm just going to give it. Receive you the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I don't even know if I had a chance to say Jesus. I don't even know if I had a chance to say hallelujah. But that's how I believe that God wants you to receive the Holy Ghost sometime. And sometimes you got demons that need to come up and out. You need to call on Jesus. You need to fall at the mouth. You need to get purged. Mm hmm yeah, y'all looking at me like that. We believe in purging. People need to purge. Yes, Lord. Don't come bring that demon up in here. We've had to wrestle with demons. I mean, not really. Yes, we have. I've been one demon so strong. Lord, have mercy. I'm glad I worked out. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, yeah, you see people levitate. I've been praying for this man. Was it the day he got the Holy Ghost? Yes, man. You know how they used to do them uh, dances when they are uh, on the floor doing like the world? You see that? Do it backwards on your back. Okay. Go ahead and top that. Wow. He was on his back. Wow. Like he's in water. Wow. Yeah. We, got, we got that demon cast out of him. He started speaking in time. He hauled his belly real tight. He said, oh, oh, oh. People came out. Yeah. He started getting yeah. I still remember the message. Shekinah glory. Remember that message? That was the day that man was elevated. Elevating on his back backwards. Like a snake. Shekinah glory. 
So some people don't believe in demons. Some pastors don't believe in I don't believe in that thing. I ain't gonna come over here. I heard of a story of a pastor. I ain't gonna call him a name. I don't like dropping name. He had made a statement and said, I don't want them spitting all that junk up over here on my floor. On my car. So he didn't want them spitting them demons out. On this car. Well, rumor has it, and it's a proven fact too, someone came into his church and killed someone in his church. Not too long after you made that statement. So since you don't want to cast them out and let them just stay there and do what they want to do, Leave it alone. I'm picking again. Right? So we believe in casting devils out. If you got a devil, you need to cast out. Amen? If I got a devil, I need to cast out. Let's go to the Word of God. Let's go to Ezekiel. Chapter number 36. Dealing with the blessing of Abraham, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse number 26. 36, 26. Whenever you get down, say amen. amen. 36 and verse 26. And the word of God reads as follows. And the Bible say, a new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit. A new heart will I give you and a new spirit. Somebody say a new heart, a new spirit. Sometimes we have stinking thinking. And we need to get that spirit of the world cast out of us. Amen? You cannot bring the junk of the world into the church and just say I'm sanctified because I call on Jesus' name. Some things, sometimes you need a new heart. That's right. They need a new spirit. Amen. Amen. And a new spirit will I put in you, within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of you. And I will give you the heart of flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. Yeah. And cause you to walk in my statutes. Yeah. And you shall be, and shall keep my judgment and do them. See, the problem in the church is that a lot of folks have a Holy Ghost. A lot of folks don't have the Holy Spirit or they don't have the, you know, some people say Holy Ghost. So they, they act a fool, God forgive me, sin. They, they act like a grand rascal. I'm not trying to call them a fool. They just act up, God forgive me, Jesus' name. They act up so bad. They are so low down and dirty because they're not operating in the Spirit. They're not doing things according to God's rules and law. But when the Holy Ghost get off in you, and I will put my spirit within you. And when you got the Holy Ghost, got a right dose of the Holy Ghost, it's going to cause you to walk in my statutes and keep my command and judgments and do them. If you're struggling with living holy, if you're struggling with living right, Maybe you need a second dose of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Pastor, what you talking about? Second dose of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In the book of Acts, the Bible says, I think around about Acts chapter 4, chapter 5. After they prayed, the place was shaken. Yeah. And they was all feel ugly yeah. with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes you need to come to church and pray to be shaken. You need a second anointing, praise the Lord, to shake the devil off your back, to shake the flesh away from you, praise the Lord. You need a refilling of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, and I don't know, my out of their palace shall flow rivers of living water. Not a river. Rivers of living water. More than one. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Somebody didn't come out and say, touch me again, Jesus. I know you got you touched me this morning. You touched me yesterday. You touched me last week, but you touched me a year ago. Touch me again, Lord. I want another revealing 
of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If one church didn't do, then you better get to. Refill me a kid, God. Shake me a kid, Lord. Heal me a kid, Lord. Deliver me a kid, Lord. Take the taste of that junk out of my mouth, God. Amen. 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 Joel, or Jewel, or Joel, chapter number 2, verse 28. Joel, chapter number 2, and verse 28. Whenever you get that, please say amen. amen. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Yes. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see vision. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out of my spirit. Yes, Lord. Verse 29. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out of my spirit. Stop right there. Mm. Servants, people that don't mind humbling themselves. That's right. See, the reason why I hate to say it, there are some rich folks that do get the Holy Ghost. But he said, My servants, if you got too much pride that you can't see God, it's hard for them to pour out the Holy Ghost upon you. My servants and my handmaids, yeah. I will pour out my spirit upon them, the working class folks. The people ain't, ain't all bougie. You can be too bougie for God. Amen. 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 Bring your bougie self down to the altar and get the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Humble yourself in the presence of God and let God fill you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I ain't never listened to Pastor Jones again. Do you classify yourself as bougie? Bring your bougie self on down here. We will pray for you. And we will seek God with you. And let God fill you with that Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It don't matter what you get in life. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you do not have it going on. Don't let nobody. Jesus said, What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What you got in your bank account? What you got in your accounts and all these stuff? If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you do not have it going on. Amen. 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 Acts chapter 1, verse number 7 and 8. Dealing with the blessing of Abraham, the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Like we had mentioned in Galatians, chapter number 3, verse 14, 11 to 14. <clears throat> and like Jones, can you read that? Acts chapter 1, verse number 7 and 8. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Power to walk right. Power to talk right. Power to live right. Power to be a witness. And being a witness is not only with your mouth. Being a witness is with your walk. It's with your talk. It's with your lifestyle. Amen. Amen. Can't be drinking no gin and juice and trying to tell me about Jesus. Smoking on your black and mild and poor smoking my faith and trying to tell me about being saved. It gives you power to be a witness. Come on the press fight with me and you try to win with me about Jesus, the Holy Ghost give you power to be saved. That's right. That's right. Wow. Yeah. I see talk about my black and mouth. Hey. Yes, I am. If you're trying to be a witness. 
I said only if you're trying to be a witness. Amen. 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 John chapter. See, I'm not down to people that's got problems with crack. I'm not down to people that's struggling with nicotine with right. addiction. I'm right. not. But when you're trying to be a witness, when you're trying to be a witness, Amen. Amen. I don't take you serious when you blow a smoke in my face. Don't tell me that God got power to deliver me, and you still holding on to that crack pipe. Jesus, come on now. I know the man. I know the man. The question is, you the man know you. you? Come on now. Let him preach. Wait, do I know you? Why are you looking at me like that? Yeah. Matthew chapter seven, verse twenty-one. On. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But take it to the will of my Father which is in heaven. For many, not one, not two, not three. For many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. They knew how to call on the name of the Lord. Yeah. Have we not prophesied in that name? Cast out devils in that name. And there are many wonderful works in the name of Jesus. But I'm going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. You claim to know me. See, that's power in the name of Jesus when you use it. And you might be able to do some stuff just by using the name. But just because you use the name don't mean that you're in the right relationship with God. Come on now. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. I never knew you. Never. You claim to know me. But I never knew you. Jesus. You ever been in Walmart? Mm -hmm. Look up the Walmart. Hey, how you doing? And you start feeding your man, Lord, what am I talking How you doing? That's fine. How you doing? Doing fine. You remember me back 15 years ago? Jesus. Not really, but it's good to see you again. Amen. He said, Kevin, yeah, you get off with me, you got to get away. He said, Lord, forgive me in Jesus' name. I don't even know who I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But when you got a relationship with people, yeah. it's going to be 30 years ago, right. 40 years ago, right. you still know their name. Right. I was at, uh, uh, at at one of these places recently uh, getting, getting a battery for one of the cars. And uh, I, I, um, I walked up to the man I had, remember when I first got the mobile, I called him by his name. I think I stuck him because I called him by his name. Mm. He probably figured out who in the world am I talking to. I said, how you doing? He saw that one looks on his face like, <laughs> I said, my name is Barry Jones. Then it came back to his mind. Mm -hmm. Amen. You don't want God to do you like that. Jesus. I never wow. knew wow. you. I never knew you. Amen. Amen. So everything that say I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved, I'm saved, yeah. Don't y'all like this song? I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved, I'm saved, yeah. Some of y'all ain't. And some of us ain't. Not according to the word of God. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's go on a little further. That's enough of that. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter. Do you feel that scripture up there right there? Chapter 3, Paul, yes, you did. Okay. And it says, and you say, um, and it shall be witness unto me in Jerusalem and Judea, and severe and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. You finish that up right now? Acts chapter 2, verse number 1 through 7. I don't mean to vaccinate and be on this a little bit longer, but sometimes when you're dealing with the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, it takes some time. It's all right. Amen? Acts chapter number 2 and verse 1. I'm going to go ahead and read that. Acts chapter number 2 and verse 1. Amen? Amen. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all, they were all with one accord in one place. Yeah. So it's imperative that when you come seeking God for the Holy Spirit, slash Holy Ghost, that you got to put people out. Sometimes you already told me, you know, I, I tell people sometimes, you know, take them to the back. Because the folks in the sanctuary are looking at them like, hey, child, I'm hungry. Mm. The parts ain't open no more on Sunday. Uh, Why should be open on Sunday? It ain't open no more Sunday. Hey, God. Somebody said, horse chicken calling me. Collard greens calling me. 
Mac and cheese is calling me. I'm making somebody hungry right now. Amen? It's calling me. So they're looking at you. Lord, I hope she hurry up and seek God. I don't want you to be that way. You know I'm telling the truth. Child, did I cut my food off at home? You got to start putting all that stuff in your mind. This sister need to get in a hurry. So I asked them, I said, take them back in the back so they can. And then we'll dismiss church so y'all go and get your chicken. Go on to your buffet. Go and cut your food off. Amen? Say, take them back in the back so they can see God. Because the Bible says it was all in one place and on one accord. They didn't have their own agenda. Amen? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rush of mighty wind. And it fit all the house where they sick. When you get on one accord with God, be. When you get in one place, with one mind, one purpose, no other agenda, except to seek the face of God, the Holy Ghost is going to fall. Amen. 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 And they appeared in the cold talk like as a fire, and it set upon each of them, and they were all filled. They were what? Not one, not two, but all. all. <coughs> filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, and began to speak with other tongues, the Spirit gave them utterance. And began to speak in other with other tongues and begin to speak with other tongues. Tongues that means language. They ain't speaking gibberish. That's right. It ain't gibberish. They begin to speak in another language like French, come and like in Japan, or high concerns. Can you see what? That's actual Japanese. Now, Tommy Kalibu is actually French. So they begin to speak in another language as the Spirit of God killed the others. It ain't Jewish. Amen? And there was dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation of heaven. Now, when this was not the broad, the multitude came together and were confounded because every man heard them speak in his own in his own what? Verse 3 said tongue. Verse 5, no, verse 6 says what? Language. So when he's talking about clothing tongue, <coughs> I mean verse number 4 said tongues. Of the tongue. The other tongue in verse 6 describes it, of the language. And there was all amazed as one was said one to another, Behold, I not all these that speak Galileans. And how did we every man in his own tongue or language? When he was born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia and in Pontus and in Asia, in Phrygia, in Pamphylia, in, in, in Egypt and in parts of Libya, about Cyrenes, strangers of Rome, Jews, proselytes, priests of Arabia. We do him, do him all speak in our tongues slash languages the wonderful works of God. So when the Holy Ghost come in, you begin to speak in another language. You begin to speak in another language. Another tongue. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter number one, only 13 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men, and of angels, and have not charity. I become a sound in brass, articulate silver. So you might be even speaking in an angelic language, but it is a language known either on heaven, in earth, or on earth, in, on earth or in heaven. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. See, we don't do enough teaching like stuff like that. Come on now. I'm scared of them folks. They all they're falling at the mouth. I'm scared of them. They got me scared. When I was growing up in the Baptist church. We go and visit, we sneak out and go visit a hole in the church. And we didn't know no better. We saw people falling at the mouth, rolling on the floor. Some of them speaking in tongues. We just didn't know. But I'm here to teach today what that is. Amen. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Ah, hallelujah. Acts chapter 2, verse 16. Amen. And y'all bear with me. I ain't trying to stay all day, but we got to get this thing. The foundation got to be laid. That's all right. Amen. Acts chapter 2 and verse 16. Amen. Amen. 
For these are not drunken as you suppose. In other words, they are speaking in tongues, they are speaking in another language, some of them may have been staggering like a drunk man or something like that. He said, these are not drunken as you suppose. Because verse 13 said, others walk and say, these men are full of new wine. People will mock you when the Spirit of God is moving on you when they don't understand what's going on. People will mock you when the Spirit of God is moving upon you and they do not understand what's going on. Yeah. Ain't that what it says? Verse 13. But Peter standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, Peter is known unto you, and hearken to my word. For these are not drunken. God read their heart. As ye suppose, sin is but the what the third hour of the day. Six o'clock is zero 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 hundred in Jewish time. Oh my goodness, in one hour is seven o'clock. Uh, 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 zero two hundred. The second hour is eight o'clock in the morning. Oh, praise the Lord, the third hour is nine o'clock in the morning. At nine o'clock in the morning, the Spirit of God had shown up and shown out. At nine o'clock in the morning, God had poured out his spirit. Y'all never thought about that, did you? It wasn't a noon day. It was at nine o'clock in the morning. Amen. The outpouring of the spirit of God yeah. was done early. The Bible said, early will I seek thee. See, that's why a lot of times God will wake you up early in the morning. Yeah. Sometimes you wake up and God got a word in your mouth. Sometimes he give you a dream to be while you're sleeping, praise the Lord. He'll do it early in the morning. At 9 o'clock, they were speaking in tongues. They were prophesying. They were telling people about the goodness of God in other languages. But this is that. See, but it's but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last they said, God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see vision. And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out of my spirit in those days. And days of my spirit and they will prophesy. Amen? Amen. So that's what Joel was talking about, right? Right. John chapter 14, verse 16 to 17. John chapter 14, verse 16 through 17. Amen? Amen. Are we there? John chapter 14, verse 16 through 17. Amen? Amen. That's all verse 15. I love this verse. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yeah. If you love me, keep my commandments. Why did I go down? Because he says, if you love me and keep my commandments, and, and I will pray to my father, pray to father, and he shall give you another comfort. Yeah. That ye will, that he may be and may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot see, cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither know him, but ye shall know him. For he shall dwell with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Amen? Amen. But all of this starts with your love of God. All of this starts with you having a relationship with God. You love God so much, he's going to give you some things that is precious to him. Amen. Which is that gift of the Holy Ghost. The comfort. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Drop down to verse 26. Same chapter. Amen? Amen. Oh, I got to go. Why am I going now with the love thing? Psalm verse 23. And Jesus answered and said, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our bowl with him. He that loving me, not keeping not my saying. And the word which, which he hear in is not mine, but the Father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, 
being yet problem, problem with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, yeah. whom the Father will send in my name, he's going to teach you all things yeah. and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have what said unto you. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will remind you when you're getting ready to do wrong if you're there. Holy Ghost will remind you of what God said if you're there. Amen? Now, have you ever been on to do something? The Holy Ghost said, nah, that's against God's word. You can't do that. I know you feel like speeding and doing these folks are driving like a turtle. I know you want to stop the cast and go around real quick. Slow down, slow your road. That's right. You got double lines. You got to wait till you get to one. Them little dots and the little, you know. That's it. You got to wait. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Holy Ghost going to say, you know that ain't right. Why are you going to that person like that? Then you pass somebody, you see, look, it's all the person. Yeah. <laughs> now you feeling guilty, That's man. Right. That's right. You blowing that grandma, you blowing that granddad. That's right. He just trying to get the way going. That's it. And you blowing at him. Gotta get that right now. <laughs> Holy Ghost will tell you that you're wrong. That's right. I recently got upset with somebody. How's John got upset? Yes, Lord. I got upset with them. I, I raised my voice up. Do this right now. What? I said, do it right now. I had to come back and say, I'm sorry. I need you to do it right now. I want you to do it right now. I don't want to lay my hands on you. I'm not going to lay my hands on you. But I need you to do it right now. And it's for your own. I had to repent. Because of my tone. If you got the, I don't understand. Oh, Jesus, here we go. If you know you've done something wrong. I'm going now. We going in Jesus' name, Mr. Bell. We ain't going by ourselves. We going in Jesus' name. How is it that you know you've done somebody wrong and you claim to have the Holy Ghost and you can't say these words, I'm sorry. Come on. Three of the hardest, I'm sorry. Well, that's two words. I'm sorry is two of the hardest words said in English language. I'm sorry. And you know you're wrong. It's two left shoes. Come on now. You still want to say, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. How about this? Forgive me. Jesus. Those are hard to say too. I'm sorry and forgive me is very hard to say. Holy Ghost will make you sing. The Holy Ghost will make you sing. You may not want to say it, the Holy Ghost will make you say it. If you claim to have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will make you. The, the, the Bible said, let not the sun go down on your realm. You say, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. That's enough of that. John chapter 15, verse 26. Are we wrapping it up? Anybody read it? Give us a call. Why don't you read it? John chapter 15, verse 26. But when the Comforter is come, yes, sir. whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall, shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Amen, amen, amen. Jesus said in one place, Father will send the Comforter. Yeah. And now he said in another place, whom I will send. Yeah. How many of y'all know something now? What he's saying? Me and my father are what? One. We're one. We're one. Amen? That's right. But the comfort, when the comfort is come, whom I will send, whom I will send unto you from the Father. Yeah. Even the Spirit of truth. Mm. Yes, Lord. The Spirit of truth. Spirit of truth. So if you got the lying spirit, you got to check yourself when you read yourself. Mm -hmm. Because the comforter is the spirit of truth. Yeah. You just got caught. You just got caught. No big deal. Say them words. I'm sorry. That's it. Say them words for you. When people point out your mess, don't lie. Acknowledge your mess. 
Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm almost done. I tell my cookies, children they go out and eat cookies and stuff. Anybody take the cookies? Crumbs all on the table. It was mayo. Really? <laughs> they love to blame mayo for stuff. They don't like the devil stuff. They be trying to put them like the devil. They always blame the devil stuff. The devil didn't do. It was Nahum. Nahum? Come here, let me spell you bread. Come a miracle. <laughs> spell like a little miracle on that too. Come and tell. <sighs> See, like all of y'all is plotting together against the cookies that was on the table. Serena ain't old enough to do it yet, but I definitely believe anything going on in that kitchen. The cookies, she probably got a part of it. She gonna be guilty court association. <laughs> but tell the truth. I done it. Y'all, we only live one time. You have the spirit of truth. Don't walk around here lying. Don't walk around here lying. Tell the truth. If you got the spirit of truth. Even the spirit of truth which you receive from the Father. He will testify with me. Romans chapter number 8. A couple more scriptures. Can we wrap it up? Romans chapter, I said that a couple minutes ago, didn't I? <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse number 8 through 10. Forgive me, Lord. See, I just said it. Forgive me. Is that too hard to say? Forgive me. Yeah. Romans chapter 8. Amen. Amen. Verse 8 through 10. Dealing with the Holy Spirit. Dealing with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Now, if you're confused about anything I said today, Lord willing, hopefully we can download it on YouTube or Facebook or whatever. Amen? Amen. Chapter number 8, verse number 8. Romans 8 and verse 8. So then they that are in the spirit cannot, they that are, so that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you're not in the flesh. <coughs> but in the spirit. This will be the spirit of God dwelling in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of God, of Christ, he is none of his. So I don't care. I care, but not a lot. I care. What your pastor taught you in the church of Frigidaire, it don't take all that. Because that's what they show teach folks. It don't take all that. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So it is imperative that you get the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It is imperative if you claim to love the Lord that you let God fill you with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Amen? Amen. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised up Jesus of Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the Spirit that dwelleth in you. So you need the Spirit of God is the resurrection power of the Holy Ghost. So people said, we all gonna rise. But according to what I'm reading here, the Spirit of God is the resurrection power of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's go a little further. Amen. Romans chapter 8. While we're in Romans chapter 8, verse 27. While we got it, I'm going to go down. Amen. Amen. Let's start verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what to pray as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Amen. 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 The reason why I said that because a lot of time we are. The more you pray about your problem, the more the more the pressure you get. Anybody knows that? The more you pray about your situation, the more the pressure you get. Well, I'm praying, Pastor. I'm praying every day, every hour, every second. That's the problem. You ain't in the spirit. Because when you start praying in the Holy Ghost, you ain't praying about your situation. You're praying according to the will of God. And your prayers may be for somebody else other than you. Amen? Likewise, the Spirit also has a lot of prayer. For we know not what to pray as we should. What we should 
pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself making it intercept for us with groanings which should not be uttered. And he that searches the heart knows what is in the mind of the Spirit because he making intercession for the saints according to the saints' will. No. In and according to your will. According to the will of God. So therefore you need the Holy Ghost. That when you're praying in the Spirit, you're praying for God's perfect will. Amen? Amen. Amen. Not your will. Mark chapter number 16, verse 15 through 18. I heard uh, Mr. McConnell hit on this while he was praying today. I mean, uh, yeah, I heard Mr. McConnell hit on this while he was praying. I thought he touched on this stuff. Mark chapter number 16 and verse 15. Amen? I'm almost there. And it says it like this. 16 and verse 15, and the word of God says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized, that's we've got to get baptized in the name of the Lord. But he that believeth and shall be saved. But he that believe it not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Last scripture, Acts 2 and 38. Then we're done. Acts 2 and 38. As you saw that we said, he that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. He that believe it not shall be damned. Amen. Acts 2 and verse 30 says, Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse number 39. For the promise is unto you and unto your children, unto those that are far off, even as men as the Lord our God shall come. All his bowed, all eyes closed. We thank God today. Ministers,